Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. A few days ago I had a chance to assemble a computer for a great Fortnite warrior. Of course the budget was very limited, but there were two very important demands. First, it had to be Core i7 CPU, and second, the chassis must include RGB lights. That's why I had to compromise with everything and I have decided to go with a mutant build. I was able to buy a very cheap ASRock H310C motherboard and picked the i7-8700B mutant. Most of you probably know about Core i7-8700K and Core i7-8700. Core i7-8700B is equivalent CPU but for the mobile platform. Chinese have modified this mobile CPU to be able to use with the desktop motherboards. First, let's take a look at the technical specification of our today's hero, Core i7-8700B and compare it to some other mutants. So, technical specification of i7-8700B. This CPU is very similar to QTJ2 Mutant, which I have tested some time ago on my channel. These CPUs have 6 cores, 12 threads. Maximum memory frequency is DDR4-2666. Here is a difference though. QTJ2 is an engineering sample CPU and you can overclock memory beyond DDR4-2666 using the cheapest H110 or H310C chipsets. With i7-8700B you need a Z-series motherboard to be able to overclock your memory to anything faster than DDR4-2666. Maximum turbo frequency with i7 is 4.6 GHz, with QTJ2 we have 4.3 GHz. Maximum all-core turbo is 4.3 and 4.0 GHz for these two CPUs. Both of them are coming with integrated graphics Intel UHD 630. i7-8700B by default is limited to 65 Watt TDP configuration, while QTJ2 is limited to 45 Watt TDP. It's also worth noting that there is another interesting LJ1151 mutant. This one is a Xeon E2186M. This CPU also has the same 6 cores, 12 threads, the same DDR4-2666 memory, but the clock frequency is slightly higher. 4.8 GHz maximum turbo and 4.5 GHz all-core turbo. The CPU also comes with integrated graphics, which is UHDP630. TDP limit is 45 W. This TDP limit is not really relevant because on the most motherboards you can configure TDP limit for these CPUs to whatever you want and to whatever your motherboard can hold. Even though Xeon E2186M was not tested by me, the technical specification is very close to i7-8700B. Thus, the test results of i7 can be used to roughly understand the performance of a Xeon E2186M and QTJ2 mutant. i7-8700B was tested with the following configuration, 16 gigs of RAM, 2 sticks, 8 GB each, G-Skill DDR4-2666, CL13. The cheapest ASRock H310C MDVS motherboard, Intel box cooler which I have got from another build from Core i5-11400, EVGA Supernova 750G3 power supply. The performance will be compared to Xeon i5-2690 V3 and Core i5-10400. A few final notes before we go into the test results. First of all, Core i7-8700B is fully locked, it is not possible to overclock this CPU, and if you have non-Z series motherboard, then you will not be able to rise the memory frequency above DDR4-2666. It is also not possible to make any voltage adjustments using ASRock H310C motherboard. But under full load, without any power restrictions, this CPU consumes more than 115 watts. This is a bit too much for the cheap ASRock H310C motherboard and the VRM starts to throttle. That's why I have tested two configurations. The first configuration is absolutely no changes in the BIOS, so the CPU is limited to 65 watt TDP under long boost. And the second configuration I have lifted up the power restrictions to 85 watt under long boost and 115 watt for a short period boost. Another important point is that this ASRock H310C motherboard has only two memory slots, as we can see from multiple different benchmarks, even if your game does not use more than 16 GB of RAM, it is still sometimes beneficial to have four memory sticks instead of two memory sticks. 
Furthermore, I have used a different power supply. With Core i7-8700B, I have EVGA Supernova 750G3 instead of EVGA Supernova 750P2. The G3 unit is slightly less efficient than the P2 unit, thus this comparison all in all is not one-to-one -to, -one to Core i5-10400 testing and Xeon i5-2690V3 testing, which I'm going to use here for performance comparison. Still, this is a real-world system which is sold to one of my customers customers, that's why I think this comparison will be interesting, and let's go into the test results. As usual, let's start with memory performance. Even though Core i7 with its DDR4-2666 memory speed is not able to match Core i5 with the DDR4-3200, the memory latency of just 46 nanoseconds is even better than Core i5-10400, which has 48 nanoseconds. Overall memory performance of i7-8700B is very close to i5-10400. Xeon i5-2690, which has four memory channels, is as expected much faster when it comes to read, write and copy performance, but the memory latency is almost 70 nanoseconds. Starting with some synthetic benchmarks. Here i7-8700B, which has very similar core configuration to i5-10400, demonstrates very similar results. Even though i5-10400 has slightly lower CPU frequency, it is still beating i7 in Geekbench 5, Cinebench R23 and V-Ray benchmarks. If 85W configuration of i7 is just slightly behind Core i5-10400, then i7-8700B limited to just 65W is noticeably slower than Core i5-10400. Rendering results in Blender and Corona are also very similar i 7 b with 85W configuration is almost as fast as Core i5-10400. 65W configuration is slightly slower. Let's switch to the gaming tests. Here I have tested 17 different games, but the performance of i 7 b is so close to Core i5-10400 that I am not going to bother to go through all of them. I will only talk about 5 of the games, but if you're interested to see each individual graph, then please follow the link provided in the video description, there will be a Google slide presentation with all the information. Starting with the 3D mark, here we see that i7-8700B is basically identical to Core i5-10400 in 85W configuration. 65W configuration is slightly slower. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, a rather old and not really optimized game. Nevertheless, i7-8700B is matching Core i5-10400. In both configurations, i7 is rendering 25 and 71 FPS. Core i5 is slightly better, 31 and 75 FPS. Xeon i5-2690v3 is not too bad either, 23 and 64 FPS. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a much newer and a much better optimized title. Here, all four configurations are demonstrating almost identical performance. In all cases, we have about 90 FPS 1% low and about 135 FPS on average. Digital Combat Simulator World. Here we see that i7-8700B is not able to match i5-10400 even though the game is utilizing only one or two cores. In this benchmark, minimal FPS is very random and not consistent at all. Thus, let's take a look at average FPS. i7-8700B in both configurations is rendering about 131 FPS, while Core i5-10400 is able to deliver 142 FPS so the difference is about 11 FPS. It's also interesting to see that the Xeon i5-2690V3 is staying right in between these two CPUs, 134 FPS on average. F1 2021. This game heavily relies on the memory speed and the memory latency. Thus, i7-8700B limited to DDR4-2666 is not able to match Core i5-10400. With the 65W TDP limitation, we are getting 205 and 276 FPS. Increasing the limit to 85W, we are getting 212 and 288 FPS. Core i5-10400 is better than these values, 210 and 306 FPS. Xeon i5-2690V3 is yet again able to deliver almost identical performance, 195 and 281 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn is a very CPU demanding game. Here, 85W configuration of i7-8700B is almost matching i5-10400. With a 65W limit, i7 is rendering about 109 and 159 FPS. Increasing the power consumption limit to 85W, we are getting 113 and 164 FPS. 
Core i5-10400 is able to deliver 124 and 173 FPS. The gap between these two CPUs is yet again around 10 FPS. Xeon i5-2690 V3 is slower than i7-8700B, but it's still hanging right in there. Minimum 110 FPS, on average 156 FPS. If I combine all 17 tested games, I get the following result. i7-8700B limited to 65W TDP is able to deliver 88 and 143 FPS. Increasing the power consumption to 85W TDP, we are getting 91 and 146 FPS. As you can see, the difference between these two configurations is just a few FPS. Core i5-10400 is able to beat i7-8700B at 85W, it delivers 95 and 153 FPS. Xeon i5-2690 V3 is not a gaming CPU, and it's not surprising that it is taking the last place. Still, it is surprising that Xeon was not that much slower, 83 and 138 FPS. In the power consumption measurements, i7-8700B is able to deliver almost at the same level of efficiency as Core i5-10400. Increasing the TDP limit to 85W is somehow spoiling the efficiency, but we need to remember that i7-8700B was tested on a crappiest motherboard with a different CPU cooler and with a less efficient power supply. All in all, if you are building a strictly gaming PC, I would not bother to unlock power consumption with the i7, just leave it at the default 65W TDP configuration and let it be. The gaming performance is almost identical in both configurations, but the power consumption increases. The conclusion here will be very simple. Core i7-8700B is a very interesting CPU. The performance is almost matching Core i5-10400. If you already have an LJ1151 motherboard, then this might be an option for you. Especially if you're building computers for sale and you can buy 1151 motherboards for cheap, then Core i7-8700B is an excellent option because many different gamers, they know that Core i7 is a gaming CPU, but nobody knows what is the QTJ2 uh, or let's say Xeon CPU. Still, for myself personally, I would pick Xeon E2186M. This CPU has slightly higher clock frequency and right now on AliExpress it costs a little bit cheaper. Nevertheless, it is much harder to sell a Xeon CPU than a Core i7 CPU. That's why for myself I would go with Xeon, for sales I would go with i7. As always, I strongly recommend you to check your local market status and see maybe Core i5-10400, maybe Core i5-10400F with B460, B560 motherboard will be a much better option for you than bothering with these LJ1151 mutants. With this, I have to say thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and educational, bye bye for now.